Hello children, third module, page number 11, the last paragraph on that page. You can't, sorry, you cannot imagine, dearest Connie, my feelings as I looked into the eyes of Fitz officer who approached me, hand outstretched. Hans Wolf, he said, gripping my hand warmly and holding it. I am from Dusseldorf. I play the cello in the orchestra. Happy Christmas. So here he goes on to say that uh, he was so surprised to see that the commanding officer uh, of the opposite side, that means the M enemy side, that is the German side, the Fitz officer, he, he approached with hand outstretched, means his hand was, you know, out the thing, like as if he wanted to, you know, greet somebody with a handshake. And there he was, you know, introducing himself as Hans Wolf, he said, gripping my hand warmly and holding it. I'm, and now he goes on to introduce himself. He said his name. What was this? Hans Wolf. And he goes on to say that he was from Dusseldorf. And he played the cello at the orchestra. Cello is nothing but an instrument. Which looks like a large violin. And he also wished him a, a happy Christmas. So here when somebody is introducing uh, themselves. The other person cannot keep quiet. Isn't it? It is rude or it is bad manners. So here at once. The English uh, commanding officer is a Captain Jim McPherson. Okay, so now you know who is writing the letter. It is the direct. So, uh, Jim McPherson, I replied. And a happy Christmas to you too. I am a school teacher from Dorset in the west of England. So, now here we come to know that, you know, when uh, both the commanding officers introduce themselves, you you must have noticed one thing that they are not professional uh, soldiers okay they do not spend their whole life fighting as a soldier they are you know soldiers that are recruited for a short term services okay so now uh, we come to know that the german soldier he was a uh, what is a musician who played in the orchestra whereas here on the british side uh, Captain Jim McPherson, he was by profession a school teacher and uh, from the place of Dorset that happened to be in the west of England. Ah, Dorset, he smiled. I know this place. I know it very well. We shared my rum ration and his excellent sausage. And we talked, Connie, how we talked. He spoke almost perfect English. But it turned out that he had never set foot in Dorset, never even been to England. He had learned all he knew of England from school and from reading books in English. His favorite writer was Thomas Hardy. His favorite book, Far From the Madding Crowd. So out there in no man's land, we, talk, we talked of Bathsheba and Gabriel Oak and Surgeon Troy and Dorset. Okay, so now here he goes on now. The introductions are done and then uh, we come to know Jim, uh, the commanding officer, the Captain Jim from the English side. He goes on to say that they shared their rum ration, they shared their drinks and also their food and then they started talking. They were having a conversation. They exchanged information about each other. And uh, uh, Captain Jim goes on to say that uh, uh, that is Hans Wolf. He uh, knew a lot about England, and his knowledge about England was not because he happened to be visiting the country or he had you know come over to England. It was mainly he had got all this information. All his knowledge was what he had gathered from reading books. Okay. And then he says that he, uh, uh, because he uh, read books, his, his favorite writer happened to be Thomas Hardy. And the, one of his famous books and his favorite book was also Far From the Madding Crowd. And so he says that in that area, that in that no man's land, these two people were sitting there and sharing information about each other, personal information about each other, about their families and, uh, you know, uh, common interest. 
and then he says that and then he was talking about batseba and uh, gabriel oak and sergeant troy now these three names are nothing but ha- they happen to be the characters of the book from far from the madding crowd okay then the german uh, what do you say officer he also goes on to you know give information or he goes on to say that he has a wife and he also has a son who was just born 6 months before and he was you know so unlucky enough that he was not able to uh, you know see his son as i looked about me there were hurdles of khaki and gray everywhere all over no man's land smoking laughing talking drinking eating hans wolf and i shared what was left of your wonderful christmas cake corny he thought the marzipans were the best he had ever tasted i agree we agreed about everything and he was my enemy there was never there never was a christmas party like it corny now we also know that you know jim macpherson is writing this letter to his wife and in this uh, letter he says that you know they exchanged the personal information uh, the german soldier goes on to say that he is married he has a wife he's not seen his newborn baby and then as they you know looked across on either side they saw you know lines and lines of gray coats and khaki coats you know mingling with each other and all of them all happened to be in a very very happy frame of mind all of them were you know laughing talking drinking eating smoking and enjoying themselves and uh, you know he also goes on the british soldier goes on to says that he was you know it was uh, they shared uh, the f- food what they had and they were also or oh, you know um, sharing uh, and the british soldier even you know allowed the german soldier to taste his wife's cake and the marzipans and the other one appreciated it and he said that it was the most wonderful that he had eaten next paragraph then someone i don't know who brought out a football great coats were dumped in piles to make a goal post and the next thing we knew it was tommy against fitz out in the middle of no man's land hans wolf and i looked on and cheered clapping our hands and stamping our feet to keep out the cold as much as anything there was a moment when i noticed our breaths mingling in the air between us he saw it too and smiled jim macpherson he said after a while i think this is how we should resolve this war a football match no one dies in a football match no children are often no wives become widows so now here he says that as both these commanding soldiers looked across they saw you know their soldiers were having a happy time with each other <coughs> laughing talking eating smoking drinking and enjoying and also they also noticed that out of somewhere somebody bought a football match and imi- uh, sorry a uh, bought a football and immediately when they saw this they were all excited and they all wanted to have a game of football and so uh, uh, they were all covered with their coats so immediately the great coats were all piled up on one side and that became their goal post and then the match started between the english and the german soldiers and then both these commanding officers were sitting and watching and they were cheering for their sides and uh, they also you know to keep themselves warm they were cheering clapping stamping their feet just to keep themselves warm because remember it was you know the month of december it was snowing it was very very cold and then he says that uh, immediately the german <coughs> soldier uh, immediately said that you know this is how we should you know resolve the war this is how you know uh, the outcome of a war should be uh, it should be like by playing a game of football in the sense that you know uh, after a certain uh, time period it is decided who is the winner and who is the loser but in a war it goes on for ages it goes on for months or years or decades and then so many lives are lost children are often 
uh, wives become widows lives are lost and also they were not happy with the fact so uh, the german uh, soldier uh, the german officer he just you know uh, what do you say Mm, uh, uh, suggested his uh, what do you say uh, idea as how the war should be solved. So and at that time uh, the English counterpart said, "I prefer cricket." I told him. Then we Tommies could be sure of winning probably. We laughed at that and together we watched the game. Sad to say, Connie fits one two goals to one. But as Hans Wolf generously said, our goal was wider than theirs, so it wasn't quite fair. So now he says that you know, uh, the British soldier said that no, we should have a game of cricket, and then um, if a game of cricket is uh, played, then surely we will definitely be the winners. So then, uh, uh, we say Jim MacPherson also goes on to tell or uh, 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 also writes. in his letter to his wife that it was finally the germans who had won and they had won by two goals to one and uh, and, and morally it was you know decide it was a fair game uh, next paragraph uh, page 13 the first paragraph there the time came and all too soon when the game was finished the schnapps and the rum and the sausage had all run out and we knew it was all over i wished hans well and told him i hope he would see his family again soon and the fighting would end and we would all go home so now the game was over and then finally it was you know it was time to wind up it was the whole day they couldn't be there out there and whatever drinks and food and all they had all had you know almost run out and then they knew both the soldiers on either side knew that yes now it was time to run it was uh, the uh, the end the time of their enjoyment was over and it was back to where uh, what they had initially come there for and then they all parted each greeting each other uh, you know uh, for their good uh, and well be and then hoping that the fi- uh, fighting would end soon and then they would all get to go home i think that is what every soldier wants on both sides hans wolf said take care jim macpherson i shall never forget this moment nor you he saluted and walked away from me slowly unwillingly i felt he turned to wave just once and then became one of the hundreds of gray coated men drifting back towards their trenches so you know very very reluctantly both the sides you know parted ways and then uh, uh, each of them wishing for each other's well being and at the same time hans wolf also said you know take care uh, jim macpherson and uh, he would never forget this moment what they spent with each other they saluted as a mark of respect because they are soldiers they saluted each other and they walked away slowly and unwillingly they did not want to continue with this war that shows their unwillingness and <clears throat> he turned to wave just once so you know he just turned to you know his uh, to wave his friend one last time and then he also joined the grey coats that were retreating back and the khaki coats that were retreating back towards their trenches okay uh, now the last paragraph on that page that time that night back <clears throat> in our dugouts we heard them singing carols and singing it quite beautifully it was a uh, still notch that is silent night and our boys gave them a rousing chorus a while shepherds watched we exchanged carols for a while and then we all fell silent we had our time of peace and goodwill a time i will treasure as long as i live so he says that uh, both the soldiers after a uh, group of soldiers after having a uh, time uh, a good time with each other's company they now went back to their dugouts like means to their places where they were uh, the same and then there uh, he says that they could hear carol singing going on 
and uh, the german soldiers were singing silent night in their german language and they sang it quite beautifully and because they could hear the singing was you know quite uh, it was audible so the british soldiers also from this side also uh, uh, in their chorus they started singing while shepherds wash and like that way uh, uh, you know carol exchange was happening from both the sides we had <coughs> our time of peace and goodwill so here jim macpherson goes to says that the whole day they were at peace and at goodwill there was no fighting a mutual understanding between them and he says that this is what he will be treasuring the most okay children i will end my third module here